All right, guys, so right now, whenever the user submits this form, what's gonna happen is it's gonna package up all of the data, it's gonna get whatever song they selected, and it's gonna send it to this URL, music favorite. So what is that URL? Well, it's gonna go look in here, the URLs directory, and say, all right, what is the URL or view function for views.favorite? Well, let me hop over to views, and I need to find a function called favorite. So that is the last piece of the puzzle that we're gonna do, write the function to essentially handle all of the form data. Now, since we're also working with the song model, instead of just album, we need to import that right at the top. And let me just copy this. So views favorite, make a function called favorite, and it takes all the same stuff. So again, just like the detail view, this URL structure, Whenever we call this URL, it also passes in the album ID. Pretty sweet. So we can actually copy this line of code too. Love copying and pasting. And let me give myself some more space to work. All right, man. All right. So we already have the album ID, but now what we need to do is we actually need to make sure that we have a valid song ID. So whatever song gets passed in, we're gonna query the database and say for this song, set is favorite equal to true. However, if that song doesn't exist, maybe they just didn't select anything or trying to like hack our website or something, then that's where we're gonna say, okay, instead of just favoriting a song, send back an error message. So that's all we're doing. So we'll make a try statement and we'll, we first need to get the ID of the selected song. So I'm just gonna store that in variable called selected song set it equal to album dot song set dot get and pk equals post song all right so how do we get the id of whatever song they selected well whenever we made this form right here what it did is it looped through every single song so for each song it set the value of it to the song ID. So what we're doing right here is we're saying get the value of whatever song they selected. So this is gonna be equal to something like one, two, 10, 14, whatever. So we took the value or ID of the song and it's now stored in selected song as long as they didn't do anything stupid. All right, so that's all we have to do in the try uh, statement or the try block I guess it's called. Now we need to handle exceptions. So if you can't select a valid ID, maybe, I don't know, like I said, they didn't select anything or they're trying to hack our website for whatever reason, if the ID is not valid, then the error messages that it returns is key error or song does not exist. So what do we wanna do in this case? Well, we still wanna redirect them back to this template but now what we want to do is we want to include an error message. So whatever we write in the error message is going to pop up at the top. All right, so return, render, and do we want to copy this now? Just do it by hand. All right, Recur return, render, request, and just remember, we're just sending them back to the details page but instead of just sending them back with no information, what we want to do is this. Actually, I can just go ahead and copy this whole thing. I'll show you guys the easy way. So we're basically just going to send them to that details page, but instead of just sending them album information, we also want to include an error message like this. Error message. And what can we say in the error message? I'll just say, uh, uh, you did not select any song, a valid song. That might be a little bit better. All right, looking good. So hopefully they don't get that, but if they do, then there you go. So the last chunk of the puzzle is just an else statement. And this is if everything goes fine. So if we get an error, then it's just gonna return the function right now. So if we get to this part of code, we know that everything is going smoothly. So do you remember how to update the database to pretty much just change something? Well, what you do is you just take selected song 
and change its attribute to is favorite to true. And also remember that I said anytime you actually want to make sure you save the data to the database, you need to explicitly call the save function. So this just changes the attribute and this actually stores your changes in the database. So now what we can do is this man way too convenient. All right. So there you go. If everything went smoothly, then we're just going to return them to this page. And hopefully now that the song is favorite, they're going to see a star right next to it and check it out. So this is the form right here. And in case you guys didn't know what I was talking about, this input is essentially this button and the label is this section of it right here. So let me go ahead and click I love bacon and hit favorite. And now we can see that we have a star popping up. And now let me click Bucky is lucky, hit favorite. And now we see that we have a star popping up and this is actually favorited in the database. So just real quick, just to review exactly what happened is it's gonna go through and generate that form. And for each form item, it's gonna link each song with a song ID. Now, whenever we select one, such as I love my boyfriend and we hit favorite, what that's going to do is it's going to take it and pass that information to music favorite. So music favorite, the view function that was hooked up to that was just this favorite. So that kind of is the process. It goes, gets the ID of the song, sets its attribute is favorite to true, save it in the database and redirects you back to the same page. So for the user, it just looks like they never even left the page. Pretty awesome. That is the basics of form handling. Again, this is just one way to do it. Um, probably the easiest way, or actually it's not the easiest way, but it's the easiest to understand. So later on, we're gonna take a look at some more convenient ways to handle forms. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys next time.